Oh, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I know it's early, but I'm going to make a gingerbread house treat box today. I know some of you are going to have your heads explode when I say I'm doing a Christmas project today, but hang tight. Stick with me, okay? This really cute house box die designed by the ever amazing Julie Ebersole is for Halloween or Christmas, and I have ideas for using it all year long. But this little stamp set goes with it too, and you can put stamp little windows and doors rather than die cutting them. So with the die itself, you have to remove all the little pieces in between. There's lots of little snipping to do in this particular thing. The four across the, the way, those are all the walls of the house. The two top ones are the pitched roof, and then the bottom one is the bottom of the box. And I'll show you how it assembles after I get it colored. But I also want to make you aware you can do this for Halloween. This is a project that I did over on Ellen Hudson's channel at the end of this video. I will link you to that. So you can see my spooky tea light houses. Aren't they just the cutest ever with their little battery operated tea lights inside. So I have set aside all of the windows and I'm just gonna tape this down to a piece of Nina cardstock because I'm gonna do some Copic coloring. I put it in my Misty and I'm actually stamping it on a piece of acetate first, just a little piece of scrap, so that I can make sure everything lines up the way that I want it. Because I am infamous for having to redo projects again and again because I didn't test them. So now I've got my stuff here. I just need to add my roof to the other side and it's ready to start my coloring. You could also do this on watercolor paper and do your waterproof ink and all that kind of fun stuff to paint things instead of Copic coloring them. The things that I'm going to paint on here, the little gumdrops that I'm going to paint, you could do very easily in watercolor. I'll talk about that as I get to them. But the color that I'm using here, these reds, if you have not watched enough of my videos, which I will chide you if you have not watched enough of them, I always love to use my R89 for my dark and my R37 for my mid-tone. Those play nice with all the other reds. And at holiday time, it's always a good time to remind everybody because it's time for red things. My R14 is dying and I am infamous for not wanting to re-ink. So I was trying to see how much I could squeeze out of it and said, okay, to heck with it. I'm just gonna move on to other colors and do the darks at the top of my, my pitched roof. You could also do it with the lights at the top and then work my way through my colors. And I decided that I was going to have to probably go ahead and re-ink that silly marker. I don't like to stop projects in the middle and go re-ink anything. I like to just set it aside and then have one big day of re-inking everything. But this time I said, nope, I've got to get that R14 working. So there's my nice simple roof because I'm going to have lots of busyness going on on the side. So I wanted that roof simple, but you could do the roof in all kinds of crazy colors, color each one of those sections in a different color. could be really fun. And for the gumdrops, I'm just making blobs. And I'm going to stay with the traditional red and green colors, but you could get all kinds of crazy with this and use all sorts of fun colors. This whole house would be great in like pink and teal or just all different kinds of fun combinations. So have a blast with it and put your little candies on there. If you have other candy stamps, combine them with this. If you have like those little peppermints, the little round ones, stamp some of those on there. Just, just have fun decorating the house, especially if you're going to keep this thing because it may be a treat box that you give away and then the person's going to throw it away. Don't spend a lot of time on it. Just die cut it and call it done. Put a ribbon on top. But if you're going to actually do something that you want to keep, if it's going to be, say, an ornament for your tree, then spend some time on it. You could make all these little, little gumdrops in stickles, or after you get the Copic coloring done, put some glossy accents over them. There are so many ways you can really dive into a project like this and make it really, really fun. But if you are doing one of those things where like everybody at work is going to get a treat box on their desk, watch the Halloween version of the video, um, me making the little house box, because in that I'll show you how, how I made multiples of the same one. 
just using washi tape to hold them together in the right way so that you can just keep die cutting and die cutting die cutting this little house you could die cut with the little door and there's one little tree tree in the window and then a couple blank windows just regular normal windows with no season th to them and just do the whole thing in red green or white or maybe a mix of them and put a little treat in each one for everybody at the office and all you have to do is that die cutting and quick assembly and it's going to be really easy to make a whole lot of them at once this though takes a little time so you want to make sure that this is going to be a keepsake that somebody's going to hang on to whether it's you or the person you give it to. With each one of these though, they're just blobs. I've put a sea of dark color at the bottom, a little C shape to make shadows, scribbled some mid-tone color and then gone back over with my highlight color again. And I'm gonna do a couple other things to add some texture to them as soon as I get all the coloring done. So it's gonna be really cute. They're gonna actually look more like gumdrops right now. They look like, I don't know, little round blobs. But I've got some colorless blender on a paper towel, and it's a paper towel with a lot of texture in it. And I'm just dabbing it, just a quick press, don't smoosh it around, and it will pick up some of that texture. Be careful if the, the little thing gets too saturated or if you start picking up color, because you could transfer color and make a mess out of things, so be gentle with it. Then it's time for assembly. And I'm going to put all of my tape on the top, the right hand side and the bottom. There is a step that I'm going to do next that if you're going to follow this and make these little gems or little gems, little gumdrops, then I will recommend that you do it now rather than wait until the box is assembled. But I'm going to bend all the pieces. You can use a bone folder and make them all crisp or you can just bend them with your fingers. They work really well to bend right along the score lines that appear when you do the die cutting. And the first side you'll put together is the side of the box and note that it is flat and it would fit in an envelope if you wanted to mail this to your grandchildren or something. It would be really fun to send to someone else and have them assemble the box by just peeling off the tape from the top and the bottom and sticking it together. So tuck those bottom flaps in, attach the two on the very top. Those little side panels, those triangle panels, just kind of fit in there. They just kind of stand up, so no, nowhere to tuck them in. You can trim them down a little bit if they don't fit quite perfectly in there, if you want them to tip in further. But there is the house so far, and I was thinking it needs a little something else. And this is the part that I think you could do when it's flat, and it would be a little bit easier. I just took my white pen, my little white gel pen, and made some little speckles on top. And you could make dark speckles on the bottom so that you get more of that roundness, emphasize more, but I think just putting the white speckles on the top half of each one of them is enough to make them feel like gumdrops. They've got that little kind of sugary coating on them that looks really cute. And then for my roof, I'm just adding a little highlight onto the edge of each one of those little tiles. Just to add a little interest to them, I don't want them to stand out too much because the main emphasis on these is on all those really sweet little gumdrops. So there is the house so far. And yes, I'm a, a noodler. So there's gonna be one more little thing that I'm gonna add because I noodle. I needed a step for my door because I stamped my door too high. So I just put a little red step there for somebody to walk up to the house. Isn't that the cutest little thing ever? And then you can poke your little candies in there, whatever treats you're gonna to give to somebody. Just make sure if you're gonna make some cookies or something, make those small enough to fit. Cause you don't wanna to get to the point where you have everything ready and then your cookies don't fit inside. So make little teeny tiny ones, maybe little bonbons or something would be really sweet inside or just hang it on your tree. You could make a whole advent calendar out of these. The kids could get little treats every day. So many different ways to use this. So I'm gonna sign off now. I will see you guys next time. Go watch the Halloween video and maybe get this die set and make yourself some boxes. And I'll see you guys later.